Well, welcome everybody to the uh, Communication Society Portland chapter. Um, this is uh, we, you know, with the pandemic, we, uh, we have switched our our on-site meeting to this uh, yeah, venue for going on. I think we have one one every month for the last four, five, six months, maybe. Right? We do uh, keep a video recording for those of you who do not could not stay long enough or need to review some of the recordings and materials. Uh, it'll be available on the CompSAC site and, and I'll put an email to you guys if you're interested. All right. And with that, I ha I'll hand over to the uh, the moderator, Raf Bharatambi. All right. Uh, thank you, Pradeep. You can hear me, right? Yes. All right. Okay. Um, I'm very happy to introduce uh, my colleague and friend, Dr. Dave Kavalkanti. Uh, Dave is a principal engineer uh, at Intel Corporation. Uh, he is responsible for developing next generation wireless connectivity and distributed computing technologies to enable uh, autonomous time sensitive systems and applications. He received his PhD from computer science and engineering at the University of uh, Cincinnati in 2006. Uh, he leads uh, Interlab's research on wireless time-sensitive networking and industry activities to enable determinism in uh, future wireless technologies, including uh, next-generation Wi-Fi and beyond 5G systems. Uh, he's a senior member of IEEE, and he serves as the chair of the Wireless Time-Sensitive Networking Working Group in the Avenue Alliance which is in, uh, in the um, industry group facilitating an ecosystem of interoperable TSN devices and deterministic uh, networking across Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and 5G technologies. Uh, without any further ado, uh, let's welcome our speaker to talk about wireless time-sensitive networking, which is a very hot topic currently. Uh, Dave, uh, just to ask, um, is it okay to interrupt and ask questions uh, in the middle? Yes, please. And uh, Rat, I'll ask you if there are any questions on the chat, please, if you can moderate that and let me know, because I, I, I probably won't be able to, to follow. Yeah, sure, sure, Dave. Okay, so um, if anybody want to ask questions directly, you know, please um, unmute and ask questions. Uh, if the questions become too many, you know, then we will kind of, you know, may have to um, uh, postpone it to the end of the uh, talk. Uh, otherwise, you can ask questions. And if you want to put it in the chat box, that's also okay. I can moderate those questions. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, welcome, uh, Dave. Okay. Uh... Let me know if you see my screen. Yes. Okay, one more time. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks, Rath, and everyone for the invitation. Really uh, nice to be here and to talk about this technology, which is, as you heard from Rath, is basically part of, of my, my work at Intel. And the, across the industry. So yeah, again, thanks for, for the opportunity. I'm always excited to, to talk about this topic. And uh, yeah, today we'll, we'll go a little bit deeper into uh, TSN technologies, what TSN is, and uh, especially on wireless TSN, which is uh, the idea to uh, enable time sensitive communications from wire to wireless domains. And we'll talk about uh, how Wi-Fi is enabling it, how 5G is doing that, and uh, many applications of, of this technology and some of the challenges as well. So uh, before I start, I would like to recognize many contributors to, to the works that I'll, I'll, I'll be sharing today across Intel, but also across the industry and, and several research partners that, that we have. I probably forgot some, but you know, uh, 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 we do have many collaborators that, that helped uh, you know, develop the, these technologies. Uh, so uh, TSN uh, is really about determinism, right? And the goal is really time sense to, to satisfy the needs of time sensitive applications, right? And, and this, uh, what we mean by time sensitive applications. So these are applications that need 
accurate time synchronization, predictable, usually low uh, latency, right? With high reliability. So we are talking about uh, industrial control systems, robotics, uh, autonomous systems that operate in an industrial environment, for example, that you can run control loops at very uh, fast rate or, 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 or low latency control cycles. And, uh, but also in other environments, like even in consumer experience, right? When you have immersive experience, AR, VR, gaming, those are applications that the latency and reliability are very important. So, so this is, you know, the scope of, of TSN is really to, to enable those applications and uh, enable technology that, that will satisfy those requirements. We'll, we'll look a little bit deeper into where these requirements come from and what, what exactly they are. And I, I'm using here an example of a control system, right? Uh, which is it's very basic. You have a, a simple closed loop system where you have sensing, you have control and you have actuation. And uh, the system operates in a, a closed loop where you have uh, usually a synchronous uh, or time synchronized loop where you have a PLC, the controller, collecting inputs or IO inputs from the devices, from the sensing devices, right? And actuating a robot, for example. And uh, this communication, so there is communication, there is computation, right, in this loop. And uh, usually it, it, it repeats in, in a cycle like this, where you have a time where you need to send the input, the communication part, and then you have to compute the action that the robot needs to do and then you actuate, right? So in this continuous. So as you see here, it's very important that this uh, data is transmitted within an expected uh, latency bound, right? Or within a time window, right? And uh, what happens is if you start to miss this time window, if this data gets delayed or, or doesn't arrive you know, at all, or if multiples of this data gets delayed, you start to see instability of the control system, right? So that's why control systems today really run on dedicated wires mostly, right? Uh, that, that can provide you know, very uh, accurate timing and, and low latency capabilities. But we are looking at you know, how that can be actually uh, extended and, and uh, run over you know, even wireless technologies. So, uh, if we look at uh, all the types of applications, like uh, even in gaming or AR, VR, right, which is a popular new uh, consum customer uh, or consumer grade kind of application, you can see that uh, it, it also operates in, in this kind of a cycle where you have uh, uh, basically, uh, you have uh, uh, gaming devices and you can have a a gaming server, for example, uh, on, the, on the back end, and the, the gaming device is sending game uh, input, right? The, the gamer is, is controlling the, the device, send input, this input goes to the server, who needs to compute and send back the, the output, which could include video as well, if you are playing a, a VR game, for example, right? And here again, if the, the request from the gamer or the state of the game that is displayed back in the in the gamer screen, right? They don't arrive on time. It causes a very bad experience, right? Lagging and, and uh, you know, especially in VR, right? Uh, the sickness, motion sickness, all those, all those things that, that can happen. So these are two examples why not just average latency is important, average low latency, right? Why every packet, uh, needs to be delivered within a worst case latency, right? Within certain windows, right? Because when these packets are delayed more than a certain time, you know, th there is a, a, a degradation of the quality of the, the experience. So uh, there is a growing need of time sensitivity from computing and from communications, right? A across uh, several markets. So th this uh, is probably very clear in industrial controls and you know, you, if you play games or, or AR, VR, you see the need for that there as well. But there are other industries where this is important. For example, pro audio and video. 
So these are performances where audio from microphones and speakers and, and instruments need to be very well synchronized, right? So not only so it's not only about latency, actually, it's about time synchronization as well. So so how you coordinate different uh, pieces of you know uh, speakers, for example, right? Uh, other use use cases are in industrial uh, power plants or, or energy or smart grids or even in automotive, uh, if you look at inside the vehicle, there are many control loops and, uh, and many uh, time-sensitive applications inside the vehicle, right? Uh, that's one other area where TSN technology is also uh, trying to, to address uh, several challenges there and uh, transportation as well. So uh, the, as we look forward, right, uh, we don't see the, the need for this to reduce. Actually, it's just going to grow, right? So the need for more performance and more determinism is just going to uh, uh, expand. But uh, not everything in a network is time sensitive, right? I, I, I wanted to point out that, OK, many things are not really uh, that time critical but they all need to share the same network. That's an important part, right? And uh, for example, if you think about an industrial environment where you can have all these uh, closed loop control systems, controlling robots or mobile robots, that part of the, you know, those traffics, they are very time sensitive or sometimes even safety critical, right? Uh, and uh, so you need very high reliability or very, you know, much deterministic performance, right? But on the other hand, there are you know small sensors that collect data and, and uh, send them to a database so that you're gonna do uh, analytics, right? Or, or you know try to to come up with you know uh, predictive maintenance uh, recommendations, right? So so this is in a class that we consider really delay tolerant, right? So this data doesn't have to go there, you know, in, in a millisecond or so, right? Uh, and then you have applications that involve user interactions, like uh, collecting reports or interacting with a machine, where not always you need, you may need some real time performance, right? Uh, for, for the quality of, of the experience, but uh, it's not as critical as a, as a control loop, right? Uh, so uh, the point is that there is gonna be a mix of applications with different needs in, in, in different environments, right? And uh, and even the, the specific needs of, you know, in terms of what latency, what reliability, you know, is required really depends on, on each case, right? Uh, so uh, what is TSN and, and, and how TSN can help, right? So basically TSN here really refers to a, a, a set of uh, IEEE 802.1 uh, standards that define uh, solutions or, or, or or tools to improve determinism and, and then label bounded latency without loss due to congestions of error, right? In a local area network. So uh, the IEEE 2.1 group has been defining uh, several uh, standards for the last 10 years, you know, uh, th that, that helps enhance the determinism of communications over ethernet over Wi-Fi, and now some of them are also being integrated with 5G, and we're going to discuss uh, th those as well, right? So, so this is the context of TSN, uh, because even in, we'll, we'll show even in Ethernet, where you have a wire, when you have multiple applications sharing that wire, for applications that need this determinism, right, those control loops that need the packet to be delivered in, in very uh, specific time windows, in a cycle that is, you know, in microsecond level, right? Uh, even in a wire, that, that could be congestion, right? And, and, and those packets may miss deadlines, right? And that's where TSN comes in, right? Is a, TSN is basically a, a layer two uh, technology that sits on top of standard ethernet or standard Wi-Fi and adds an, another layer of determinism in, in different tools. So it's not, so TSN again, to be clear, is not a single tool. It's actually a set of different tools that you can pick and place and, uh, and, and create your solution, right? Uh, and we'll talk about some of those tools uh, uh, to the, into this presentation. Dave, there is a comment in the 
um, in the uh, chat. Yes. I think Scott, uh, Scott, you can ask a question or maybe I can read it. Um, okay, I can ask it. There's a lot of echo. Okay. Yeah, There's a lot of echo. Lot of echo. So actually at work, a, a big thing that I do is, I don't actually do the implementation, but I do rely on it, which is the whole IEEE 1588 PTP protocol. And that's, and that's for, for, I guess, I guess you know, for uh, uh, alignment of clocks and things like that for serve for, for multi-access multi servo systems. Because I do I do a factory, factory automation, automation and machinery. And machinery. So. so. Yeah. So actually, that is the most fundamental capability of TSN, or the most fundamental TSN feature. So I'll talk about that. And what TSN does is extend the 1588. Uh, there is a prof actually defining a profile of 1588 for Ethernet. It's called 802.1as basically. So it's a GPTP. And that enables you to basically distribute that time synchronization using Ethernet and Wi Fi and 5G right across the network. So, so that is a, is a very fundamental TSN capability. And many other features of TSN depend on having that same time reference. So as, as you see here, actually, that's why the first, uh, you know, the TSN requirements or goals, uh, you know, starts with time synchronization, right? Having a precise time reference for the whole network, right? Uh, that, that's very important. And then next, uh, latency, you know, deterministic bounded latency. So note here that uh, average latency or, or, or mean values or typical values is really uh, not, uh, interesting, you know, uh, it's really about the worst case. And obviously with very low packet loss, uh, required very much uh, re re uh, highly reliable links. And then the last but not least, very important is all of these, right? You need to, to enable time critical and other traffic on the same network, right? Because of course, if you had to put a special wire for that TSN, you know, that's what you have today, right? Dedicated, you know, proprietary wires that, that uh, you know, the idea with TSN is you can create this uh, determinism in a virtualized way across, you know, the standard internet, separating this traffic and handling them differently, right? At the same time that you have all the traffic in the network. And uh, so uh, you can go into the 802.1, a group a website and find a lot more about these different uh, TSN standards and capabilities. As I said, it's really a, a set of tools. It, it, TSN is not a single, you know, uh, a single technology per se, right? And, uh, and there are applications of TSN and, and TSN profiles across different uh, markets. So different organizations are actually look at this set of tools and deciding which tools are the most important ones in certain markets, right? For example, industrial automation, there is a group, another group in IEEE, IC, IEEE 6802, which is defining what is the TSN profile for industrial. There is another one for vehicles, aerospace and others, okay? So as you see, the, the tools, TSN tools are really uh, classified in four groups. One, the first one is really time synchronization, right? As I said, a profile of 1588. Then another group of features around latency or bounded latency, those are the traffic shapers. And uh, reliability uh, features for packet replication and redundancy, right? Uh, and finally, to get determinism, right? You need to control the resources in your network. If you cannot control, you can't expect determinism, right? And so there is a lot of, uh, of emphasis on resource management capabilities. So there are you know, tools and, and uh, standards defining that, uh, resource reservation protocols, uh, configuration protocols, and we'll talk a, a bit about how, how this works. Okay, uh, then uh, let's go the next level deeper into the TSN features. Uh, and I, I'll only talk about a few of them, not, not all, as you saw, there, there are many. So the, the first and more important, most important one is real time synchronization, which is achieved through uh, 
A2.1AS, uh, which uh, basically defines how you distribute a, a reference time from a grand master, right? Uh, through the network, right? And, uh, and this time, basically all the devices can synchronize its system time to that same reference, right? Uh, across the network. And, and this uh, can work with ethernet, uh, TSN bridges and devices, but also works with a Wi-Fi uh, capable, TSN capable Wi-Fi devices like access points and, and, and devices as well, okay? And uh, basically this time is used in two ways. Uh, one is, if this is a uh, is enable enables applications right to to coordinate right for like I said the control system right the the sensor the controller and the actuator can be on the same time to operate that closed loop in a audio video application different speakers can have the same time so they can play the data at the right time but this time is also used to configure other TSN features in the network and we'll talk about one, one feature next is a time aware scheduling. Basically one of the mechanisms to, to enable determinism is to reserve time, uh, re reserve, reserve resources in the time domain. And for that, everyone needs to be synchronized to the same time. So that, that, that's another uh, reason why time synchronization is so important. So that, that is the, the time aware scheduling feature. It's another very, uh, say popular feature for TSN. Uh, this is one of the requirements in the industrial TSN profiles is the idea that uh, if you have a, a talker and listener, so talker and listener are the terminologies used in the TSN for you know, the transmitter and receiver of that traffic stream. Uh, every bridge has a multiple set, uh, set of queues and uh, the idea of the time hour scheduling or, or 8.1 QBV is to create protected windows in every uh, link or every bridge during which only the high priority traffic class is allowed to transmit and other classes are blocked. So basically this enables you to create a time gated uh, control schedule, right? Uh, where you close some queues at certain times, for example, the best effort queues, you can close it when you know there is gonna be a time critical packet coming in so that there is no congestion at that time. And the, the packet will just flow through the, the network, right? And uh, ideally you synchronize everyone in the network and you can have this packet experiencing no congestion as it goes through the bridges, right? Because when it gets to a bridge, a window will open, only that packet can go and, and so on, right? Uh, and, and so that is the concept of a, a QBV, which is pretty much a TDM kind of concept, right? Uh, now, uh, for this to work, you'll need uh, a, a, a configuration and a management model, right? Uh, so that's another very important part. And uh, this is also defined in one of the TSN uh, specs. This is uh, the one QCC spec. It defines two uh, possible configuration models. One is a centralized model or a distributed model. In this figure, I'm showing the centralized model. Uh, the centralized model is the one that is being adopted in most of the industrial uh, applications where you are gonna use this QBV or time hour scheduling capability because you need a, a central scheduler which in the TSN terminology is called the CNC or, or central network uh, configuration, which is an entity in the network that is gonna learn the capabilities of every bridge. Basically, what is the data rate that or the bandwidth that every bridge, you know, how they are connected, what are the possible paths. And also uh, there is another entity called CUC, central user configuration that is gonna collect the traffic stream information from the end devices. So as you'll see, for this to work, every device before you transmit a, or start a, a time sensitive stream, you need to provide your requirements to these uh, configuration entities, right? Because uh, I know how much you're gonna transmit, so I'll try to go and the CNC will do that. 
will try to reserve these time windows at different links, right? So that when the packet will come, the, the, the bandwidth will be available there, right? So, so the TSN model defines, you know, these entities, there is a control plane where the devices exchange the requirements in terms of packet size or inter-arrival time for the traffic. And then the, these configuration entities are going to make the resource reservation across the, the network. And this can include wired links, or it can include wireless links as well, right? Uh, so now, uh, Everything uh, about TSN uh, today, or mostly everything, you know, uh, is being uh, or started with Ethernet, right? Uh, you know, all these capabilities they, you know, originated with Ethernet, and even in Ethernet, there is a benefit because today, like I said, you may have different wires for different traffic. So with Ethernet, you can put all the traffic in the same wires. So you already uh, make it more efficient there, right? But you know. Uh, if you think about wireless, right, it has many obvious benefits over internet, over wire, right? Uh, flexibility, reconfigurability, mobility, you know, all this is very hard to do with wires, right? So there is no question uh, that uh, wireless TSN uh, has obvious benefits, you know, no question about that. And uh, some applications are, you know, uh, have very clear benefits, right? The, the question is actually, can you guarantee the performance, right? That uh, ethernet guarantees over the wired, right? So can the wireless meet the same kind of requirements, right? And, uh, but, you know, uh, so we don't expect that uh, everything will move wireless, right? Uh, just like that, uh, you know, we expect there is gonna be a transition and, uh, or, or there will be applications that make sense to do wireless because of, of the actual requirements of the application. For example, a mobile robot, right? So uh, that, that, you know, the, by definition, mobile robot needs to move around. So you do need to, to have it wireless, right? And uh, today, you know, these robots have everything, every intelligence inside the robot. So, they don't really exchange much information, right? It's completely autonomous. But you know, it, as it also another trend is uh, in order to leverage more computing power that you may have in your edge of the network, right? Uh, if you can offload some of this computing to the edge, and if you have a network, a wireless network that is you know uh, able to provide you the determinism you need, this will be very beneficial. It's not only lower the power. Or lower the cost in these robots, right? Uh, but you know, would uh, enable more flexibility and mobility, right? So there is a friendly benefit for, for more by robots, and other applications uh, also places where it's hard to reach or very or, or these wires have very high cost to maintain, like inside a wind wind turbine, for example, right? Uh, and uh, because wires also break, right? And 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 it's very expensive to replace them. Or even within a car, you know, the third highest cost in making a car is, is the wiring, right? So, you know, the point is, if you can make it work, I think there is, there is significantly benefit, right, for many applications, right? The challenge is this, you know, today, if you look at the wireless, consumer wireless, right, your mobile phone, right, your, let's say, uh, home Wi-Fi today, right? They, their performance in terms of worst case latency and reliability or, you know, error rate is really around here, right? Tens of milliseconds, you know, sometimes goes to hundred milliseconds, right? And note, I, I'm saying like worst case latency, right? Not average latency because, you know, the average latency is probably much lower, right? Uh, and depends on the traffic on the network, right? But worst case, is this, right? Uh, hundreds of milliseconds, maybe, right? And the internet is up here doing, you know, microsecond level and very high reliability. So that is the, the performance gap that uh, wireless technologies have to, to cross, right? To, to be on par 
or really extend TSA, right? And, and as you'll see here, the reason I have a little bit larger bubble for the wireless TSN is because we don't ex we expect that there will be applications or in the technology will have a, a wider range of uh, KPIs basically, right? You know, there are applications that don't need microsecond, but they can benefit from the deterministic one millisecond, right? Or, or, or a few milliseconds, right? And the number of nines of reliability really depends, you know. Uh, so, so that is a challenge, right? And uh, uh, also because Ethernet is a stable link, right? So the capacity of the link is, is static, right? You know how much bandwidth you have when you start the network. So you can configure everything and, and define those schedules. But when you put wireless in there, by definition, wireless is stochastic, right? The, the performance of the link changes with time, frequency, space, right? Shadowing, multipath, these are all uh, random effects, right? Uh, environment conditions can cause interference, right? So the, this means the typical error rates over wire, wireless are much higher, right? So that's why, you know, uh, some people are skeptical can wireless meet uh, TSN performance, right? But, you know, uh, luckily in the last few years, there has been a lot of advances in wireless communications as well, and most notably, Wi-Fi 6, 6E, and 5G, right? Uh, these are, you know, the state-of-the-art uh, wireless uh, technologies today, right? Uh, Wi-Fi 6, uh, based on the 11AX spec that was just recently completed and products are in the market introducing uh, OFDMA capabilities, uh, higher modulation, uh, now even operating a newer, uh, one gigahertz spectrum band in six gigahertz that was approved recently by FCC. So, uh, you know, the, the, we'll see a little bit more about that, but th there are many capabilities that can help you achieve this uh, DSN kind of performance. And 5G, uh, you know, I, I won't talk too much about that, but uh, I think this is very well known. Ultra reliable, low latency is one of the key capabilities. The new frame structure, uh, with very uh, mini slots and, and uh, low latency and high reliability is one of the main capabilities, right? So uh, we'll see how these new technology and their features are enabling you to achieve the TSN performance, basically. So uh, first we'll talk about Wi-Fi side. Uh, so uh, basically Wi-Fi has been evolving uh, in, in every generation, you have a new, uh, faster Wi-Fi, higher bandwidth, lower latency, right? Uh, today's Wi-Fi, uh, so, you know, your laptops or, or phones are probably running Wi-Fi 5, but the newest Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi 6. Uh, this is the 11AX. Uh, uh, it has uh, gigabit performance, improved security, was launched in 2019. And uh, more recently this year, we have Wi-Fi 6E, which is a Wi-Fi 6 operating in a new band, which is six gigahertz band, uh, and uh, which will be very important for, for TSN kind of deployments as well. And uh, one of the key features uh, that really differentiates Wi-Fi 6 and 6E from the previous Wi-Fi uh, is the introduction of uh, OFDMA uh, and the scheduling capabilities. So in, in previous Wi-Fi, all the Wi-Fi stations in the network contained for the channel using uh, random access. Now in Wi-Fi 6, there is a, a scheduling uh, capability that the AP can actually trigger multiple stations to transmit using OFDMA, basically multiple transmissions in, in frequency domain and that can uh, reduce the contention base, can eliminate th those uh, random delays, right? So we'll, we'll go more into that uh, soon. But uh, first, uh, to, from the TSN perspective, as I mentioned earlier, Ethernet and Wi-Fi, they are basically part of the IEEE 802 reference stack, right? So they are based on the same type of link layer, right? Uh, and the, the TSN layer sits on top of that, right? Uh, so basically some of the, many of the TSN capabilities already work over 
Ethernet and over Wi-Fi. And uh, like the first one, as I mentioned, time synchronization, right? So dot one AS uh, can operate over Ethernet and you can actually extend it over the Wi-Fi links. Uh, and this was defined back in the 2012 with timing measurement. And uh, 2016, there was a newer uh, mode called fine timing measurement where uh, you improve the, the granularity of the time there. And uh, basically there is a procedure in uh, Wi-Fi that you exchange action frames uh, and compute the timestamps when these frames are exchanged. And with that, uh, a device can basically calculate the clock offset from a, a, a master device and correct you know, for the time uh, and for the time errors and, and synchronize. And, and this time can flow all the way from the Ethernet grandmaster, right, to through the Ethernet bridges and the Wi-Fi AP and the clients over the air. Uh, and uh, that, there is a similar mechanism now with FTM. Uh, just add one more point is that FTM also enables not only time synchronization, but enables more accurate uh, positioning and ranging uh, using the same technology, using the same timestamps that you collect on these measurement uh, action frames, you can do ranging as well. So you can uh, time synchronize and you can localize using uh, Wi-Fi FTM. We have actually done uh, an implementation uh, of these mechanisms over Intel Wi-Fi devices. And we have tested and compared the accuracy that you get and uh, when you're doing that over the air and actually from the wired part of the network over the air. And uh, so this is a little bit of the protocol stack where these features are implemented the actual firmware enables you to collect those timestamps that are used. And then the, the dot one AS uh, protocol uh, collects those and uses to, to synchronize, uh, to collect, to compute the offsets and synchronize your system time. And uh, we have measure, uh, this is with Wi-Fi 5. We have measured around uh, one and two microsecond accuracy over, over the air with Wi-Fi. Uh, so far. And uh, so this is a uh, timing measurement. We are currently actually implementing IFTM uh, mode as well. So another feature that already uh, can work over Wi-Fi is the time hour scheduling, right? So, so the idea here uh, in a Wi-Fi case, as if you remember, when we have these multiple queues in a bridge that you are controlling them on the bridge, you open one queue, you close the others, right? And that traffic time critical traffic goes. The only difference in the Wi-Fi case is now you have to control the queues of every station on the network, right? Because they are all sharing the same channel, right? So basically you have to expand this from inside the bridge to the different stations in the network. So, and that's what we do basically. Uh, you, Wi-Fi has four queues and you can, uh, uh, base, since they are all synchronized uh, in time, you can open a queue and close all the other queues during certain times. And that way your uh, time sensitive up traffic can go without congestion, right? We actually implemented uh, also a, this feature using uh, Wi-Fi 5 and uh, and this is one example schedule of that, where we define, let's say a 50 millisecond cycle. In this, our time critical packets go in the first five milliseconds, 40 milliseconds, you let any of the traffic in the network to go, and then you have a guard band at the end. And if you run this schedule, and if you run the you know, time critical application with all the background traffic, you what you can see is, Without this mechanism, you know, the, the distribution of the latency is shown here on the left, you can see high variation, right? So the, basically the worst case latency goes into 60 milliseconds, right? Now, when you put this in place, the, the latency, and, and this is the latency for the time critical packets. So the latency for these time critical packets are, is really bounded between zero and 10, right? In, in this case, 
So you see the, the, how effective this is, even in today's Wi-Fi. So now, uh, uh, this is a, one example where we use this for an application of two robots uh, that are coordinating. So basically one of the robots is guiding the other to move a rod, a plastic rod together. So basically uh, the first robot is uh, moving and telling the second robot what's the next position. And, uh, and at the same time we have uh, video traffic going on in the network. And this, this is uh, the bottom video, what is what happens when you don't have the TSN capabilities, right? So when the traffic between robots is com competing with all the traffic in the network, you can see they actually can't follow and, and the rod kind of turns. But when we enable uh, the TSN feature, you can see the difference that they can uh, move around and that, you know, uh, that, that uh, rod is uh, much, very much stable. You know, I have a reference re here. This is a, a paper we published uh, recently in ICC. Uh, so this is just some, some uh, more data showing what, what happens uh, when you enable the background traffic and then when you enable the TSN, the latest goes down and, and stays bounded. Uh, this is another example where we apply this technology, basically two robots uh, in a co collaborative robotic cell. One of the robot uh, is, uh, position uh, manipulates an uh, object and uh, the other inspects, and, and this is, is coordinated by a supervisor. And uh, this is a collaboration we have uh, with NIST, uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And, uh, and this is the, uh, yeah, the, the use case. And uh, here, uh, if you look at on, on the bottom left side, you see this black box. These are basically the wireless uh, devices that are uh, used to operate the, the robots, uh, basically. So this is including uh, over the air using the, the wireless TSM capabilities as well. Now, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, you know th these uh, results that I just showed, right? This is Wi-Fi 5. Uh, now, Wi-Fi 6 uh, has new capabilities that are not there with Wi-Fi 5. And, uh, you know, there, there are many new features in terms of scalability, reduced interference, better security, faster speeds. As You know, every Wi-Fi comes with faster speeds. That's a given. But uh, a unique feature here, really, that, that's relevant to TSN is the uh, ability to schedule, right? So this FDMA capability, right? That, that, that's what gives more scalability. And, and the, with this, you can have much greater capacity because now you can have multi-user transmissions, basically in this, at the same time, you can uh, transmit multiple users in different, uh, frequency bands basically, right? Uh, separate the frequency domain. And uh, so we, we think this is gonna be a, a key benefit. And, uh, and and that's how it works basically. Now, you know, if you look at this picture on the left, uh, now there is a mode in this is scheduled mode where the access point is gonna try to get to the channel and then trigger. Basically there is a trigger frame that is sent which is basically a control frame that's gonna schedule the next transmissions. And the transmissions can uh, happen in the same frame or the same packet, but in different uh, resource units. So basically that's the OFDMA mode, right? And uh, so basically that's why it's a multi-user OFDMA uh, mode. So with this, if you didn't have this feature, you know, let's say in this case, you can have nine users, for example, or more, they all would have to contend and compete for the channel. Now with OFDMA, they can all go at the same time. So there is zero contention in this. So now if you use this feature, what can you do in terms of latency and reliability, right? So then we actually did some simulations of, of this feature at the time, you know, this was not yet available and we are working on, on this implementation, you know, right now, but, uh, in this simulation, what, what it shows is if you have a network 
uh, and you're trying to achieve a bounded worst case latency, right? Like on the on the axis here, let's say if I'm trying to achieve one millisecond latency with 99.999% reliability, right? So no packet, you know, almost no packet goes beyond one millisecond. For a given configuration, right, of 20 megahertz channel in this case, this is how many devices I can simultaneously support on my network, right? On my single access point, basically, right? So nine devices can do one millisecond. If your latency target is 1.5, you can do 18 and so on, right? And uh, so you can see, you know, we can achieve low latency, high reliability with this mechanism as well. And again, this is 20 megahertz, but the Wi-Fi can do 20, 40, 80, 160. So you can imagine, you know, this number here can be multiplied, right? By the amount of bandwidth that you use. Okay, so, so this is just one example, right? So these are Dave, some, um, yeah. Um, uh, can, uh, I can I ask, I ask a question? question? Yes, go ahead. I think the echo, the echo is, coming is coming from, from it was, it was not, not the case, case before. Sorry, sorry about, about that. that. Um, you know, since nobody is asking question, I will ask this question. Um, so, you know, the, you said like, you know, in 11AX, uh, the, because of the OFDMA, uh, it's kind of enabled that, you know, the multi-user transmission, then, you know, the, it's helps the TSN. So can you comment uh, on like the, um, um, the 4G, 5G, you know, which already had the OFDMA and then, you know, has the multi-user transmission capability. Uh, what's the feasibility in the, in the 4G, 5G side for that one? Oh, I got unmute. Can you unmute? Uh, Dave, now you yeah, I, I got it. I got muted, but okay. I hope you can hear me now. Yes. Yes. All yeah. right. So, yeah. Uh, so, OFDMA is a technology that is comes from uh, the cellular domain, right? Uh, LTE is OFDMA, 5G is OFDMA. So basically with uh, Wi-Fi uh, 6U basically uh, enable the same kind of technology in, uh, in Wi-Fi, right? Uh, so now, so it's also based on OFDMA and even now after Wi-Fi 6, everything is going to be based on OFDMA as well, like Wi-Fi 7 and, and, and so on, right? So I, I think, you know, this is definitely a useful technology to solve these latency and reliability, right? That's how 5G does, and that's how Wi-Fi does as well. So, oh, you know, I, I, I hope I answered the question right, but, you know, basically they are using the same fundamental technology now, you know, th those two technologies. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah thanks. thanks. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we are working on a TSN implementation of Wi-Fi 6. And uh, so this is a, a, a demo that uh, we have with the basic Wi-Fi Wi -Fi 6 capability. It doesn't have the TSN yet, but uh, what you can see here is a, a robotic arm uh, a person with a, a glove and these uh, uh, dots on his hand is being uh, tracked by a camera system. Uh, the camera system sends that information to the server over Wi-Fi 6. The server computes the model of the environment and then actuates the robot to follow the same movement of the hand. So basically this is going all over Wi-Fi 6, right? And this, you know, shows a smooth uh, performance over the air, right? As well, when you when you have the, this capability, right? And these are some of the highlighted in this table are some of the network latencies that we measured, you know, around two milliseconds, for example, right? And this is end to end in the network, uh, right? So you you can see how smooth the the, the operation is, you know. Okay. And uh, so next, oh, so what is next, right? Uh, for Wi-Fi, next is uh, Wi-Fi Seven. So this is actually under development now, and the target is uh, around 2024. Uh, so so now we are working on the first draft of, of that standard. Actually, now in, in May we expect to have the the draft 1.0. Uh, and uh, the as always, uh, it's adding more uh, capabilities to Wi-Fi in terms of throughput, you know, 30 gigabits per second is the target. 
uh, and but also uh, especially related to TSN, that you know there is an emphasis in achieving more deterministic low latency with this uh, next version of Wi-Fi as well. Uh, now we're gonna have a 320 megahertz channel, high order modulation, more special streams. Another important feature uh, is a multi-link operation, right? Uh, actually having multi simultaneous transmissions uh, and control of simultaneous transmission, the same Wi-Fi Mac and uh, with multi-AP coordination as well. So, so several of these features are under development uh, in, in the current uh, draft. They are not finalized yet, but uh, there is a, a good indication, uh, you know, that, that these capabilities will be there in the next release. And, uh, and some of the specific features that will help in, in these low latest TSN capabilities or TSN applications are the multi-link operation and uh, some of the determinism enhancements in the Mac. So traditionally Wi-Fi, you can have multiple links if you have multiple NICs, right? Or multiple Wi-Fi chipsets in the same device. In that way, you can have multiple links. But the difference here is within the same Wi-Fi chipset now, you're gonna have multiple, you can have multiple stations or multiple versions of the Mac uh, or the, the, you know, the, the Wi-Fi uh, layer operating simultaneously in the, in the same device, right? So you can have operation in three bands, for example, 2.4, five and six, right? And you can have the same in the, in the infrastructure on the access points. Now you can have a multi-link AP or multi-link device. So, so this uh, will enable you to reduce the latency because you can push traffic to different links at the same time, and, but also increase reliability, right? Because now that you have multiple links at the same time and all coordinated, you can transmit the same packet in multiple links if you need better reliability. And other enhancements that are there are, you know, the concept of a so-called restricted uh, TWT service periods. So basically this is a restriction to, to uh, basically implement the concept of the protected QBV windows, like uh, during certain times, only certain traffic is allowed. And in that way, you can improve the determinism, right, uh, in the network. And you have a notion of time inside the, the, the Mac layer as well. So uh, let's say to conclude on the Wi-Fi side. Uh, so Wi-Fi and TSN, they have been evolving together, right? So for many years, there has been features already. Let's say time synchronization has been there, you know, and is there for Wi-Fi 5 and will continue to be there for Wi-Fi 6 seven and so on. And, uh, you know, some of the other TSN features in terms of latency, for example, are, can work with Wi-Fi 5. But now with Wi-Fi 6, we have better control of scheduling with OFDMA, but even new enhancements will come in Wi-Fi 7. Also uh, redundancy, you can do it with multi-link or multi-NIC today. In the future, you can do with a multi-link operation, right? Uh, basically, with a single device, you can do multi-link uh, versus, you know, having multiple NICs. And of course, TSN configuration, you know, uh, goes across them as well. So, uh, so next we'll talk a little bit about the TSN and, and 5G integration, right? You probably heard a lot about uh, uh, 5G and, and TSN. I won't go into discussing 5G again, you know, that, that that's a, a bigger topic and uh, I, I will focus mainly on the 5G connection with TSN, right? But uh, before that, I, I just wanted to highlight a few of the 5G features that are useful when you're trying to, to get determinism, right, or, or support TSN capabilities. And, and the number one is really the, the new frame structure that you can have a uh, uh, flexible frame structure, structure with the uh, mini slots. So that can enable your latency to be very low, right? Uh, and so shorter TTIs. Uh, but there are also other enhancements like polar calls that can make a short packets more reliable or grant free uplink access that reduce the overhead to get scheduled. 
And in the release 16, there are some uh, integration features uh, for TSN. Okay, so uh, these are the you know how why 5G and TSN integrates. So uh, if you recall, when I introduced TSN, right? TSN is a as a you know technically speaking, TSN comes from uh, IEEE and is a IEEE based technology, right? For 802 based lines like Ethernet, Wi-Fi. 5G is a different technology. However, 5G does provide the tools to deliver data, you know, with the time it is, right? With low latency, high reliability. So what the 3GPP uh, standard did was define uh, interfaces so that a Wi-Fi uh, 5G system can be plugged in into a, a TSN network and operate as a virtual TSN bridge. So basically, there is two entities that were defined called the network TT and the device side TT. So basically, these are kind of gateways that they have TSN in one port, like Ethernet TSN, and then they do the conversion of the protocols, transmit that as a tunnel, let's say, over the 5G system that includes the core network, the G node Bs, and the UEs. And then at the other side, the device side will translate it back to TSN. And uh, the end devices outside, they don't know it, right? They, they don't know it went through a 5G system. You know, they just see the data getting there at the right time. So, so that's how 5G integrates in a TSN infrastructure, right? And uh, for example, we talked about time, right? It's the concept of synchronizing time. So basically, the 5G system gets the TSN time. Inside the 5G system, it has its own time. You know, it's a different time from a TSN domain. But these translator capabilities, right? What they do is they basically uh, get the TSN time, and they calculate like this DSTT device. They calculate any time offset that was introduced inside the 5G system, and they correct it. And delivers the time to the, the the TSN port at the end, right? So so this kind of seamlessly. Although inside it, it doesn't implement the you know the TSN protocols. It it behaves like a TSN bridge, right? So so that's one way. And the same for the data. I mean, very in summary, what the five G system does is when you have and you recall, right? We are really interested here about delivering the data with a bounded latency right so the 5g system what it does is okay when i get the packet on the ethernet port here i have a deadline to deliver it right uh, at the other side and then it uses its own tools like urlsc capabilities whatever tools it has to meet that deadline and uh, and and that's how it operates across a, a, a tsn system Right, so uh, uh, it's a, a virtual TSN bridge for for the device outside. You don't know what's happening. It's kind of a black box, right? Uh, but some of the tools in five G enables the 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 will enable the operators and whoever manage the network to deliver that data, right? And and this will, will be depending on the implementation. Uh, Dave, uh, one uh, yes. question. Uh, so, so is that the main, main thing, thing is synchronizing, synchronizing between, between this, this uh, the, the two uh, DSS, DSS DSTT? DSTT? Yes, so that is one of the main features because TSN, right, needs to, one of the key capabilities for TSN is to be able to pass the time to everyone on the network, right? So if there is a device here on the left side, this device, it's connected through 5G, the device, this device time need to be synchronized to that grandmaster right on the right side. So that is one of the fundamental requirements. And that was the first capable translation that 5G uh, defined basically. Okay. okay. Yes. But in addition to that, uh, 5G is also doing the, the time hour scheduling uh, or let's see its own version of that. But it, in addition to synchronizing, 5G can also deliver the data within a predictable latency, right? So th th that's the other part of it, you know. 
So those are the two main TSN features that uh, 5G has uh, enabled. And uh, yeah, in Intel, we also have a, a 5G uh, test bed where you also have TSN across the, this 5G system. And uh, that's illustrated here. And there is a small control application that, that, that has been shown. And there is a link you can follow to, to look for uh, more uh, information. Uh, and uh, these are some of the performance numbers in terms of time accuracy in the you know hundreds of nanoseconds accuracies, latencies for downlink and uplink in the 3.5 you know uh, millisecond range. Right. Uh, these are over the air uh, measurements in this test bed. You know. Uh, where in where at the end you have TSN and in the middle you have 5G, right? That's like similar as the 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 scenario that I showed before. So uh, to conclude, I just want to say a few words. Uh, what is next, right? Like, what, what do we expect to see? You know, uh, looking beyond 5G. So uh, the work already started uh, to look at the the requirements for 6G, you know, there are uh, projects, this is one of them in Europe that's looking at the, you know, what what more can be added, right, to, to wireless and to 5G systems. And, uh, and there we see the, you know, uh, there is still going to be an exponential growth for connected computing, right? Uh, so more integration of digital and physical experiences, right? And, and uh, uh, these immersive experience, more, uh, let's say, digital factors, right? Where you have humans, robots, all interacting. All of these new applications are really not going to require less, you know, uh, performance, right? They, they all going to require more uh, from the network, right? More in terms of bandwidth, lower latency, high reliability. So there is an increasing need for determinism, right? So we believe the need for this kind of TSN capability is just going to increase, right? Another uh, two other aspects here is autonomy and sustainability, right? So how you do this in an efficient way and, and, and power efficient, and that's very important uh, for the devices, right? Uh, as well to you know for that, that are battery operated, but also for running your network, right? To be more sustainable overall, right? In, in, uh, in uh, how you use uh, network, the network, uh, how the network runs efficiently, right? From an energy standpoint. But also, as you see, uh, as the wireless solutions are evolving, they are adding more and more capabilities, right? So these TSN features of scheduling everything in the network, this is becoming more complex, right? And it's very hard to, to manage as you, if you imagine scaling it to hundreds of devices, right? Or thousands of devices, right? So there is a need to automate the network, right? And, and people are looking to how you use AI and other techniques to basically make these systems run by themselves, right? So that's one of the active areas of research, you know, uh, and, and uh, that we expect a lot more needs to be developed. And, uh, you know, uh, finally, I'd like to conclude with this other uh, work here that we have been exploring, right, is, which is this. So far, right, when we talk about 5G or, or TSN and wireless TSN and Wi-Fi 6 and so on, the requirement, right, or what everyone is trying to do is to make the wireless solutions work as a wire basically right so everyone is asking like the, the network the you know industrial companies right, they are asking oh 5g is great right wi-fi is good so give me a a wireless that behaves just as a wire so i can switch it right uh but you know so that means we are designing these the expectations for wireless is to operate at very low uh, error rates right which is very hard Right, because of the environment interference and many other things, right? So we question whether this is really realistic to design this way, right? If we design for the worst case, right? Uh, now, what if 
rather than trying to just design the network to meet the worst case for every packet, right? Every time critical packet in a control loop, they all need to have the same reliability, right? Which is what we are doing now. What if we, instead of looking at that, you know, we look at, okay, what if we try to just meet the requirements of the control system, right? Or as an application, right? Or the game or whatever application you have, right? What if you, instead of uh, look at the network as an isolated pipe, you have some more information exchange between the application and the network. So that's where, you know, we, we came up with this concept of the core design and other people in the you know uh, academia and industry are looking at that as well where how do do we optimize the wireless resources based on the state of the application right for example a control loop uh, you know it, it may be running uh, in a stable uh, state right or unstable right and uh, if it's stable the loop itself has its own inbuilt, you know, uh, resilience, right? Uh, and, uh, but, you know, uh, when it's getting to a stable state, it's more critical that you control it faster, right? So the point is not every packet needs to have that uh, critical reliability, right? So, the, you know, we did a study. What if you use the state of the control system to prioritize the traffic or how you schedule the traffic on the network. And we found that uh, if you use this kind of a co-design approach, right, you can support a lot more devices or you can support a lot more control systems with the same amount of resources, basically. Comparing to the case where you only try to meet, let's say a certain latency and reliability, right? So if you look at this figure on the, on the right, if you just look at the, the dark blue and the yellow. The dark blue is the case where, okay, every device, he, every control system, I just need to give everyone, let's say one millisecond or 0.5 millisecond and five nines reliability, right? And, and the, the yellow one is, okay, I, I just try to keep that controller stable. And you can see how many systems you can support or how many users you can support, right? You can support a lot more. So the point is, yeah, it would be great if you can provide this service, you know, the, uh, high reliability for everything in the network. But if you have insights into, you know, what the application is doing, not every packet needs that, you know. So in that way, you can scale your system, right? So that, that's one of the, the areas of research. And uh, yeah, just to conclude, you know, we looked into mostly the Wi-Fi and 5G advances that are enabling uh, TSN over wireless. Uh, we expect the deployment of this technology will really be gradual, right? Time synchronization and, and scheduling are the first uh, steps. And uh, it, it's really important to, to look at the uh, end-to-end -end picture, right? Where you have all of them together, like Ethernet, Wi-Fi, 5G, because they, they'll complement each other. And the need for this type of applications will really grow. And the, the wireless capabilities are expected to grow as well. So, but they are becoming more complex, right? So uh, I think it's important to look into how you automate the, these networks and, and, and how to make it easier for, for customers to operate them or to, to use them as well. And yeah, with that, I'll, be open to take any questions and, and thanks again for the opportunity to present. Thank you, Dave, uh, for a very interesting uh, talk, uh, talk uh, and informative talk. talk. Uh, Jack has a question in the uh, text box. You know, Jack, do you want to ask the question? Okay, I can I can, I can uh, ask the question. Basically, he's asking about you know Wi-Fi six and Wi-Fi seven. Uh, uh, Operating unlicensed band. band. So, so he's, he's asking, asking like, like, you know, you know do you, you, you know, is that a, a uh, interference free environment or does the standard do anything about it? Um, yeah, good question. So, in, uh, I, I'll just go back here on the Wi Fi 7. Uh, 
or Wi-Fi 6. So the it's a licensed spectrum, right? But uh, so the standard, uh, or, or let's say there is no, every device has to follow the FCC rules for, for operating that spectrum, right? But the, the, it's not dedicated, right? Now, between the, the Wi-Fi 6 devices, right? Or Wi-Fi 7 devices, or, you know, within the old network, they all have to follow the standard, right? So they all have to play by the rules, right? So, so that's why you can control, for example, using this FDMA, right? You can control the contention of the collisions in your network, but you cannot control, let's say, or prevent a, another device that's not in your network, right? From from getting to the channel or trying to, right? So that that by you know by definition, since this is unlicensed, you can't do that. But one important thing to remember is uh, in uh, now, especially now with Wi-Fi six E, we have a new uh, band between six and seven gigahertz. That's almost uh, one gigahertz of spectrum, and. Uh, old Wi-Fi devices before Wi-Fi 6 cannot operate in that band, right? Say Wi-Fi 4 or 5, they cannot transmit there because the enablement of, of that band only happened in Wi-Fi 6. So that means there is a lot less issues with legacy devices, right? Uh, and, you know, in, in some of these deployments, uh, the amount of channels that are available are significantly high. So you know, you can reuse or you can basically move channels, right? So there are a lot of tools, let's say, to, to handle those. And uh, so, so that's why we believe with these capabilities and this, you know, spectrum, you can get very reliable performance, you know, with Wi-Fi 6 and, and, and uh, 7 as well. All right, thank, thank you, Dave. Any, Any other, other questions, questions from, from the audience? audience? All right. All right. If, if there is no other question, question uh, let's, let's uh, thank our speaker, speaker again for a very informative, interesting talk. talk. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you, Dave. Dave. Thanks, Rod. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm.